Okay, we will get started since you can see me. Thank you for participating in this session. My name is Joy Sampson. I'm a career coach here at Career and Professional Development. I just want to remind everyone, this is part of the Career Development Series. And if you attend at least three career academies, you will be um, you able to receive a professional development certificate, as well as be entered into a drawing for an iPad Pro. You should have received a link to the survey to complete in order to get credit for your attendance. So make sure you do the survey, um, and this way you can be entered into the drawing and receive your certificate once you attend three. The link will also be resent after the session. So let's get started. This is the Smart Networking Six Strategies for Success. All right, strategy one is first impressions. First impressions are very important, and here are some things you need to know about it. First, you want to know your context. If it's formal, or an informal meeting or if it's dinner this will give you cues on how to dress look and behave next adjust your attitude you want to come across as approachable sometimes if you are having a bad day it may show on your face if you're having a good day it will show on your face so you just want to be cognizant of your attitude and make sure you are approachable. Next, search for common ground. This will help you have an easier time connecting. You can talk about the weather or something you have noticed in your surroundings. Next, shift the focus from yourself to others. Remember, people always remember how you made them feel. So take the focus off yourself and direct to others. Make someone feel appreciated. Uh, for example, you can compliment something that they've done. Get a good night's sleep. When you are sleep deprived, you, you appear different. Studies show that sleep deprivation can lead to others viewing us as less smart, less attractive, or less healthy. So make sure you get a good night's sleep. And then finally, be yourself. It is important to be genuine. Don't worry so much about doing the right thing or, or what you need to say or how you need to act in as much as just try to be yourself. You prepared for this moment and you want to execute it by being genuine. Um, the preoccupation with being worried about if you're doing everything right can make you seem uh, insecure or too strategic. So, Practice, 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 and get a good night's sleep. Strategy two, crafting your elevator pitch. In crafting your elevator pitch, you want to be sure to identify your goal, explain what you do, communicate your unique selling proposition, engage with a question, then you put it all together. Now, for this, you also want to make sure you get practice. So a quick way to think about your elevator pitch is that you will introduce yourself, you will give your name, your class year, your major, tell what you're looking for, whether that be an internship, a full-time or part-time job, tell briefly about your previous experience, whether that be work experience as well as academic experience if you're working on any research projects, and what you learned and skills developed from those experiences. Next, briefly share what you know about the company and what they are looking for and how your experiences might align with what they are looking for. Strategy three, creating value and real relationships. So words only go but so far. It is important to elevate, to develop, excuse me, your elevator pitch, but it's also important to think about being authentic and making sure that comes across to employers. Employers look for this in candidates and forming real relationships during the networking process is key. So here are some things you can do to build authenticity. First, you can greet others with a warm smile 
and look for opportunities to be helpful. Listen to others, do not interrupt, and be careful to consider everyone around you making eye contact. Then work to remember a person's name and use it in the conversation. Next, ask for a business card and stay connected. You can connect through LinkedIn or periodically stay connected through email messages. You just wanna keep your contacts informed about your professional and academic successes. Strategy four, professional presentation. This begins with your appearance. Now, remember we talked earlier about the importance of the value of a good night's sleep. So you wanna start with getting a good night's sleep. Next, hiring managers will focus on your face, your expressions, your eyes. So prepare your appearance, be neat and groomed, and do not distract from your professional presentation. So you don't want to wear things that might draw a lot of attention, uh, loud colors. Typically, there are more neutral colors, blues, blacks, uh, grays. People wear, you can wear a little color, but you don't want to do too much that distracts from your professional presentation. Avoid trendy fashions, dress, and clothes that would that you would wear on the job. So check your clothes and make sure they fit properly and are clean and free of stains. Wear clean, freshly pressed or ironed clothing. Avoid excessive jewelry, bright colors, as I mentioned, and patterns that clash. And smile, smile big. Mercy College has a professional clothing closet that is available. You can go to the CPD website at careers.mercy.edu for more information and hours of operation. Strategy five, communication skills. Now enthusiasm is key to a great interview. This separates those from drawing people in, the winners, or from those who lose their audience and can be more important than experience. So to show enthusiasm, you want to be someone who is alert, alive, and excited. Someone who's interested in what is done at the site. Someone who is excited about coming to work and who wants to help the employer. Be extra courteous. Offer a professional greeting, stand up, look the person in the eye, smile, and offer a firm handshake. Now don't undersell yourself and don't oversell yourself. Finding the right balance is key. Salespeople who are middleverts, someone who has learned to moderate their personality traits, outsell introverts by 29% and outsell extroverts by 24%. You can be sure to come to career and professional development for help practicing your interviewing skills. Strategy six. Strategy six involves following up. Following up carries as much value to the interview experience. To follow up, you want to be sure that you send a thank you note after the interview. A thank you note is important because it tells the employer that you continue to be interested in the experience now, when you get home from your interview, you want to send that note. A couple of days later is fine. You can send the manager an idea note as well. I recommend at least 24 hours. Fifty-five percent of job seekers send a thank you note. So that's important and you want to make sure you don't forget to do that. Keep in mind that managers count and thank you notes are expected. Keep yours brief. Thank the manager for meeting with you. Mention the date and the title for the position that you interviewed for. Express your desire to land the job. Offer one or two reasons why they should hire you. And then there's the idea note. The idea note includes your response to a question that may have come up in the interview. 
So most interviewers may ask a question about a major challenge you will face on the job and how you might handle that. Alternatively, you might ask the employer what some major challenges are that you may face. In any case, you want to think about the manager's answer if you've asked the question and think about how you might offer a solution. If the manager has asked you, you may answer it during the interview and then reiterate it in your idea note. As long as the information isn't confidential, brainstorm some solutions with a friend to make sure it sounds sound or clear um, with what you want to do and say. Then share that information in the idea note. So the idea note is just another form of a thank you note. You wanna mention your solutions in a short note explaining your ideas. Now your ideas may be good and you may be the only candidate to come up with those suggestions which will work in your favor. The manager may see you as a problem solver and someone who gets things done. This is important to think about. All of the things you have seen today, you can certainly use when participating in any networking event. On Thursday, October 10th, between 1 and 3 p.m., the Career and Professional Development will be hosting a Career Connections Day. This is a great way to network and meet employers and employ some of the strategies we discussed in this session. At this Career Connections Day, you will find employers that are offering internships, full-time and part-time jobs, and give you the opportunity to share your elevator pitch. If you are looking for a job, certainly this is a great time for you to come. If you are just wanting some practice, this is also a great time to come. You may have the opportunity to speak with an employer who you may decide to apply for a position with one day, and they may remember you. So remember, that's the key to networking, being remember, memorable. As we mentioned in strategy one, you wanna set a good first impression. In strategy two, you wanna crack your elevator pitch and be prepared to give it. Now, one thing I didn't mention about elevator pitches and I would like to add is that elevator pitches should not be longer than 30 seconds or so, maybe 60 seconds is okay as well but you do not want an elevator pitch that goes overly long, and you do not want something so short where the employer does not have an idea of who you are. You might find that you give your elevator pitches also during an interview. An employer may ask you a standard question, which is, tell me about yourself. In answering that question, you often answer it as your elevator pitch. So it's important to solidify that elevator pitch and practice, practice, practice. Again, this is something you can come to see a career coach about and have help developing. Strategy three talked about creating value and forming real relationships. You want to make sure you form real relationships with employers and you create value when they meet you by being your genuine self. Strategy four talked about your professional presentation. You may also find information on the career website at career.mercy.edu about dressing for success. There you will find some tips and suggestions on how to dress for an interview or a networking event. Remember, we also offer the professional clothing closet, which I mentioned you can go onto the website and see the hours of operation. It's located at our Bronx campus. But you wanna make sure you are groomed because your presentation begins with your appearance. We first see and then we communicate. The next strategy is strategy five was communication skills. And you wanna make sure you communicate well, you 
can express yourself well, and these things you do and learn become better at by practicing. So practice sharing about yourself, practice your elevator pitch, practice talking about the company, and you wanna do so until you are comfortable. And one of the ways we become comfortable with talking about ourselves and about companies is by researching and practicing. And then our last strategy we discussed was strategy six, follow up. So just to reiterate, it's important to send a follow up note. You have left the employer, you had a good impression during the networking and the interview, and now you want them to remember who you are. So you send that follow up note. I recommend sharing something from the meeting or the interview that stood out to you, such as any initiatives the company shared or some research an employer or the interviewer is talking, mentioned or talked about during the session. Share that in your note and just reiterate your interest in it and your enthusiasm to be part of the team. You may also use the method of the idea note, as I mentioned, in which case you share a solution to a challenge that may have come up or you or the employer may have asked about during the interview process. Career Connections Day is Thursday, October 10th. I hope you will attend and get the practice and the experience of connecting with an employer. This concludes our online session. If anyone has any questions, you may ask them now. I just wanna remind everyone to remember to complete the survey. The survey, which is you see on the screen, will give you attendance for attending and participating today. It will also help you uh, receive, if you attend at least three career academies, receive a professional development certificate and be entered to win an iPad Pro. If you entered a professional development certificate, if you earn that, that is something you can put on your resume, which is another boost to the resume. I hope you all found this session useful and remember the six strategies first impressions, elevator pitch, creating value, professional presentation, communication strategies, and follow-up. If you have any questions or you would like to delve deeper into any of these areas, you can set up an appointment with a career coach at mercy.joinhandshake.com or you can come into the career office. We are located in the main hall, room 247A, right above the library. A career coach would be happy to review these items with you, help you practice interviewing, crafting your elevator pitch, and getting yourself ready for your networking opportunity. Also, we have online tools that can help you with interviewing through Big Interview that you can find on our website, again, career.mercy.edu. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you. 